So I'm just going to go ahead and create a pattern first before I cut on my fabric. So now I'm on the edge of the pattern paper. I'll go ahead and mark my round shoulder divided by two. I'll mark that down there and then I'll go down by one inch for the shoulder slope. What I'm trying to do is create a basic dress pattern and from there I'm going to get my cow neck for the back and also for the front so this pattern is acting as the front and the back pattern and you guys you're going to see that it is very easy for you to create a cow neck using your basic dress pattern so I'm marking my round armhole divided by two on this point and then I'll just go ahead and make sure that this is um, the same and uh, 7.5 that I marked on the shoulder so I'll rule a straight line here and also an horizontal line. This is where the armhole will be sitting. From the edge of the pattern paper, I'll go ahead and mark my boss point. So like I said, this is a basic dress pattern without a dart. So this dress pattern is not going to have a dart and it is very easy for you to make your cow neck using your dress pattern very easy i'll mark the next point which is my waist point so there's a video on the screen showing you how to take your measurements so the points we are taking right now are the vertical points and once we are done we're going to mark our horizontal measurements so i i like to take my uh, mark my hip points from my waist so i'll place the tape on my waist and then mark nine inches down that is my hip point so if you calculate the 15 inches for my waist plus the nine inches my hip point is 24. now the full um, pattern is going to act as my dress length i'll just go ahead and rule a line here so you know this is my this is the length so I'll divide all round measurements by four and then starting from the boss points, I'll divide my round boss by four and I'll mark that down. I'll go ahead and connect this to the armhole line like this straight up and I'll find the middle point on my armhole. I'm going to go ahead and find the middle point on my armhole and this is how you do that. So I'll go ahead and mark the middle point. And from that point, I'll go in by half an inch. I am trying to create the front armhole. So for the front armhole, I'm going in by half an inch. So I'll go ahead and connect this with the curve like this. So this is the front armhole. I'll go ahead and divide my round waist by four. I'm back to dividing the round measurement by four. So my round waist by four, and then I'll connect this to the boss point. So I'm connecting the waist to the boss points, gradually trying to create the dress pattern. I'll divide my round hip by four. And then I'll connect this also to the waist point. Okay, so what I did on the dress length, I minus two inches from what I marked on my hip points. So my hip, my round hip divided by four is 10.5. So I minus two, so what I marked there is 8.5. So I'll go ahead and connect that point to, I'll connect the length to the hip points. And then I'll go ahead and shape in all sharp edges because there are no sharp edges on our body. Now I'll just go ahead and mark the neck width. This is the neck width for both the front and the back. The neck depth for the front piece is going to be 3 inches. So why I'm marking the neck width and the depth is because I said this is a dress pattern. I just want to go ahead and mark the neck measurement so um, you know how to create a basic, a full basic dress pattern. So I marked the neck depth and I connected them both for the back and the front to the neck width now creating the cow neck um i placed my 
tape and I went up by 4 inches. So from the armhole, I went up by 4 inches. Place the tape on the armhole, went up by 4 inches. I'll just rule a line here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off um, this part because I won't be needing it. So I'll just go ahead and add half an inch um, allowance on all points, on the armhole, on the waist points, the bust points. I'll just add on all points, I'm just adding half an inch allowance on the pattern paper. You can leave this or skip this part if your fabric is stretchy, you don't need this allowance. Now, so this is the pattern I'm going to be using to cut out the back first. When I'm cutting out the back, I'm going to go ahead and fold this armhole part. I'll fold it in because I want the back to be a bit lower. So I'm going to fold that part in and um, now my fabric is already folded into two. I'll just go ahead and place the pattern. But before I do that, I'm going to mark 1.5 inches for my zip allowance. So I'm just going to mark out my zip allowance on the fabric because I didn't do that on the pattern paper. Um, because the pattern was acting or is acting as both the pattern for the front and the back so I didn't put the zip allowance so on the fabric now I'm just marking 1.5 inches for the zip allowance now if your fabric is stretchy go ahead and skip this part you don't need a zip allowance you can fit in through a stretchy fabric so I'll place the pattern after the line I have ruled for the zip allowance I'll place my pattern and I'll make sure I pin this so it doesn't move remember to fold in this part from the armhole just go ahead and fold in that part if you want your back to be a bit lower go ahead and fold in that part or you can go ahead and um, achieve whatever neckline you want at your back but this is how I want mine to be I'm still going to um, do some adjustment to it on the fabric but that is going to be after i am done cutting it like this so now just to adjust my zip quickly um i'm just going to mark one inch on the bust and then on the waist so i'm marking one inch on the hip, I'm just going to leave the 1.5 inches, but I'll go down by 5 inches. And from that point, I'll mark 1 inch straight down. This is adjusting my zip so it doesn't have that bulgyness when, you know, that bulgy thing that happens when you attach a zip. This is how to adjust. This is how I adjust. So I'll go ahead and cut out the parts I don't need. And the adjustment I said I was going to make at the neckline, I'm going to do that now. So on the zip part, I'm going to go ahead and go down by 5 inches. I'll go down from the zip part. I'll go down by 5 inches. And I'll connect these 5 inches to the armholes. So that is how I want my, the back of my cow neck to look. So I'll go ahead and connect this to the armhole like this. Very simple. So if you want it to look like this, just go ahead and do this. Very simple. Now I'm just giving it the shape I want it to be. I don't want it to be all slant. I just I want it to have a bit of a curve. So that is why I just went in with my truck again. And I'll cut the part I don't need. So this is how the back is going to look. For the front, remember to fold out the armhole. Remember to fold it out. Now I'm just going to rule a line to indicate that this is the chest line. Because that is where I'll be slashing this pattern from. So this is the chest line. I'll go ahead and um, cut this out using my scissors. So I'll, um, when I'm cutting, I'll make sure I don't cut it out of the pattern. I'm just going to leave like a little bit so I can be able to open this. And I, how I want, how deep I want my cow neck to be. I want it to be five inches deep. Like, I'm just going to, you know, open this up five inches. I'll make sure, place my tape to find out 
if this is up to five inches so you can decide to make it four inches you can do just the more you move it the more deep the cow neck becomes so so now um, i'll bring in um, another pattern paper so that i can be able to get what i really want i'll spread this like i said i spread it and five inches apart that's the chest line from the other pattern so i'm just using my paper tape tape i got this tape for i think no more than 500 so in case you need some and if you don't have a tape you can use your pin to pin this down now on the neckline i'm just going to rule a line a straight line like this to the end of the to the edge of the pattern paper like this yeah i'm just going to rule a straight line and that is my new neckline for the cow neck so i'll go ahead and cut out the part i don't need And um, you guys, this is it. Now I'll fold my fabric into two just like I did for the back. And um, I'll place my pattern on the fabric. So I'm just going to pin this down and cut. You, if you don't have a pin, you can place heavy object on this. Just make sure that the pattern does not move while you're cutting so you don't make a mistake. So I'm going to be cutting out a facing for both the front and the back piece. So um, I'll go ahead and bring in a new fabric and I'll fold this into two. So if you don't want your cow neck dress to have facing, you can just go ahead and weave those edges and um, hem them or just do what you want to do. But then I want facing, I want, to ha I want my cow neck dress to have facing. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it like this on a folded fabric and um, my facing as you can see did not pass my did not even get to the bust line I just make sure it's like one inch below the armhole so I can hem and it it won't affect the armhole so I'll just go ahead and cut out the facing like this very easy and then I'll also do the same thing on the back piece. I'll cut out facing for the back piece. Remember the back piece is pleated into two. So your facing should be into two. Make sure your fabric is folded into two. Place your back piece like this. And then um, for the back piece, I make, I make sure that the facing stopped at the waist point. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out. You can place heavy objects if you don't have pins. So just make sure you have something holding the fabric together with the facing. So now just take my facing and go hem the edges. If you have a weaving machine, you can go ahead and weave the base of the facing. But I will be hemming because I don't have a weaving machine. So I'll just go ahead and, you know, fold it by quarter an inch and then i'll hem now i also cut out straps um that i'll be using for my dress two straps and these are 21 inches long because um i'll be making a crisscross at the um, back of the dress so And this is how you make a strap it's very easy so I'm just gonna drag this until I'm able to get yeah so this is the strap I have um, two of them here now I'll be placing the strap between the facing and the front piece and I'm just gonna place them on the armhole like this so yeah I'll place them on the armhole 
so what i'm doing is just i'm just pinning it down to the front piece and then pinning my facing on top of the strap and the front piece i'll just go ahead and sew this um or sew this in like this from the armhole because i want my armhole too to have like a seamless finish so i'll just go ahead and sew it in and then i'll be doing the same thing on the back piece i'll go ahead and sew this like this and then you guys i'll go ahead and join the zip parts on the skirts like the back piece the zip parts i'll sew this in in and then i'll attach the back piece to the front piece so why i'm sewing the zip part on the back piece for me to be able to attach it to the front piece so now i am done and um so i'm just going to make sure that this part meets the end of the front armhole like the armhole on the front piece the end from the zip part i'll go in by four inches this is where the um, the straps will be sitting so from the zip part i'll just place my tape and mark four inches make sure that your zip allowance is folded already like you fold it in that's why we sewed it in so that it will be folded inside if you want to make a normal strap you can just go ahead and place it like this and sew it in on like this but I'm, i want to crisscross at the back of my dress so this is how i'll be sewing it i'll be crossing the straps like this and uh, i'll just bring my stream ripper and open up those points so i can pass the straps and go sew the strap between the facing and the back piece so it'll be sitting inside that's between the facing I'll, yeah i'll place it like this and then i'll go sew okay. And then also I'll be attaching the zip to the back so make sure you indicate where you want your zip to sit like how many inches down and just go sew your zip and I'll, while I'm at it I'll go ahead and hem the base of the dress and you guys that is it for this video